What's up, you guys? Welcome back. If you are new, my name is Jess, and you have found yourself a prison YouTuber. If you don't like talking about prison or the things that lead to prison, or if you don't like seeing people successful outside of prison, this is not the channel for you. But today, I'm gonna show you guys my mug shots, which we finally found and I'm so grateful for because you really can see in these mug shots that my life was so miserable, I was broken, I, I was lost. We're also gonna be talking about addiction today and what led to my arrests and what my thought process was behind all of that. So, uh, one more little thing before we get started. I just wanna say, it is my hope that in sharing these mugshots, you guys will feel less alone. And somewhere, somewhere, an addict watching this will see that getting sober is not impossible and you can find your way out. All right, now, before I put my glorious, <laughs> mugshot on the screen, um, I want to talk a little bit about addiction. Now, this is a hot button topic right now, and it has been for a long time. You guys, I am called terrible things every single day, and I want to read you one of these comments, not for you guys to feel bad for me, just to maybe shed light on the shame surrounding addiction. Now, um, I am going to put this comment on the screen. Now, man, drugs are not the problem. It's the way that we solve our problem. Addiction is a complex disease of the brain. It's actually a family disease because everyone is affected. And while choices do lead to certain illnesses and diseases, it does not make it any less of a disease. And I'm sorry that I have to be so blunt about this, but your opinion on the wording around addiction and the scientific fact and research on addiction doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. Your judgment and shame and your negativity doesn't matter. And I can't make this video showing my mugshots without talking a little bit about addiction because I am a recovering heroin and meth addict with eight years of sobriety. It's important to me that I share the truth about addiction. And the truth of it is, I was a miserable, broken person. And the only way I felt comfortable in my own skin was to use drugs. Now, if you don't understand addiction or if that wording upsets you, or if you think it's not a disease, maybe say it's a condition, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, it is in the DSM-5 and it is a disease. So, Again, drugs, that's not the problem. It's how we fix the problem. And trauma is the only gateway drug I know of. So this comment says, junkie period, which I get called every single day. You will find your way back to dope. You always do. You gave up on life the first time you put that needle in your arm. Now you are the walking dead. Every piece of me wants to just lash out and attack that person, but there is something wrong with the person that wrote that. You can tell just by how awful and vile that comment is that they are suffering too. So it is just my opinion to not, not to clap back when you see these comments on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Just ignore them because as much as I want to tell that person to fuck off, the, the truth of the matter is, happy people don't attack people. Broken people attack people. And this person is obviously struggling and they've obviously seen a side of addiction that, that is not good. Addiction is awful. It's a terrible, lifelong battle for so many. So I just want to break that stigma. I want to break down the walls of addiction. I want you guys to feel like it's okay to ask for help because People are dying. With all of that being said, let's show my first mugshot. Ugh. So this mugshot, I think was my last mugshot off the street. I was so broken. I remember being arrested in 2011 and I was so miserable. I wanted to die and this was actually the second time that they tried to book me into the jail. When I first got arrested in uh, Sebastian County in Fort Smith, Arkansas, I was violent, I was hostile. The cops were trying to get access to the motel room that I was staying at because my Greyhound bus left downtown Fort Smith and for whatever reason I got high and didn't want to stay at baby daddy's house because we had broken up. I just wanted to get away from him. Ugh. So uh, I had a hotel room at the Motel 6 in downtown at Fort Smith and the door had jammed 
One of the officers who was a DEA agent was screaming in my face in intake. He was screaming in my face, if my officers, officers get hurt because you have a meth lab in this fucking motel, da, da, da. he's screaming, he's this close to my face. And I laughed at him <laughs> because it was so absurd to me that he thinks there's a meth lab in, in there, you know? And I thought, you don't have anything on me if you think I am making meth labs. So I really felt like the only charges that I would receive were the charges that were the meth and the gun. I didn't think I'd get any more charges because you think I'm making meth labs all over town. So I laughed in that moment, but now looking back, I can only imagine what the DEA agent thought. Like he thought his officers were gonna get hurt, you know, because it was jammed and he thought it was like booby trapped or something. So I can't imagine like he really was afraid for his officers. Um, but I was, I was high in that moment. So I thought he was crazy. So this picture was taken um, after I'd been at the jail for probably 10 hours sleeping in the drunk tank. Um, yeah, I remember having a bruise on my head from being ripped out of the car. You can't really see it in the picture, but I was ripped out of the car and thrown on the ground. There was a knee in my back. Um, agents surrounded me and I was ripped up and thrown on the hood of the cop car. And it was just a really dramatic arrest. Um, I have really dark under eye circles. I hadn't slept for days and I was just not in a good place. And I remember three days before this was taken, I just really wanted to die. I didn't have anyone in my life. I was surrounded by strangers, people that I only had known for a few months. And I left my home in New York, my boyfriend, Randy, in New York, my friends, my business. I mean, I felt so empty and lost. The only reason I was selling meth in Fort Smith, Arkansas was because I had pending felony warrants for conspiracy to commit armed robbery, which is something I had nothing to do with that Randy did on his own. Um, those charges did eventually get um, dropped because there was no evidence. They just wanted to talk to me and I ran. So yeah, stupid. Let's go to this mugshot because I look 10. Um, I have no idea when this picture was taken. I, I don't know where I was. I look five. I mean, what, the, what in the actual hell? This is, we this is a weird picture. Um, but again, I, I don't know when it was, um, I don't know when it was taken. I don't know what the charges were, but I'm probably a fucking minor. I mean, I, I literally look like, I am late for homeroom in middle school. So I don't know. No, I'm not laughing about that, but I have no idea when that was taken. So let's go to this one. It's really, really blurry. I feel like this was taken when my bond was revoked. So if you guys have been following me for a while, um, you know that I bonded out from Fort Smith for two weeks and then someone had told the bondsman that I was going to leave to go to New York, which was true. I did plan on leaving probably, or I must have said that when I was upset. I just hated Arkansas at the time, and I probably was frustrated and said that. I don't really know if I was planning on leaving. Maybe. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned that in another video. Remind me of what I thought. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, I was so upset that I was going back to jail because it meant my daughter was gonna be born in prison, and I was fucking terrified. I really was. I wasn't afraid for myself. I had been to jail many times. I had been to prison before. I wasn't afraid for me. I was afraid for my unborn child. And the fact that I was able, the fact that the bondsman was able to revoke my bond just on hearsay is crap. But that's the only time I ever had a bond. So that obviously didn't work out. And I didn't call the bondsman when I was supposed to, to be fair, because I didn't know I had to call them. I was just so overcome with emotion when I finally did get out of jail when I was six months pregnant that I was like, not even paying attention to him because I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the street. Oh my God, I'm in the street. Like I, yeah. <laughs> okay, this picture, holy freckles. Um, I think this is my, <laughs> I think this is my, um, prison mugshot when I finally got to McPherson. Um, so a lot of you, and I did share these on Instagram, a lot of you were like, oh my God, are those freckles real? Yes, they in fact are real, ew. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> it has to be the lighting. Well, I will say this, my freckles have faded over time. I um, do still have freckles that I cover with an extreme amount of makeup because I don't like them. I think freckles look so beautiful on other people, but I hate them on my own face. 
and I have crossbite, so whatever. It's just not a good combination in my personal opinion um, for my face. I don't like them, but for other people, I think they're so cute. In this picture, I'm like immediately drawn to the freckles, like ew. And my hair looks black, like it looks pitch, pitch black. I think it was just really wet and also filled with lice shampoo. Intake in prison is a very, very bad day. That's probably your worst day in prison unless you get like stabbed or something. Um, the first day is the worst day. I mean, it really is because you have to do things that you are not comfortable with like squat and cough. Yeah, everything has to be spread open and it's really uncomfortable and it's awful and there are other women in the room and the intake officer screams at you, it's this whole thing. Also, you have to take a shower in a freezing cold, like the water's freezing cold, the room is freezing cold, they put lice shampoo all over you and you're desperately trying to get the lice shampoo out of your hair but you're also wanting to get out of the water because it's freezing cold. Have you guys ever tried to do the ALS ice bucket challenge? Um, that's like a five second surge of cold, right? So imagine being in that for five minutes and you're like, like you're physically shaking, trying to get this shit out of your hair. That's what was going on. That's why my hair looks pitch black. And let's just zoom in. Let's, can I click on you? Can I click on this? Hold on. Oh, Ro just texted me that she just hit 10K. Oh, I'm so happy for her. Ro Glosson. That's my girl. That's my girl. Okay, so let's just zoom in here. Okay. Um whoa no eyebrows at all what why 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 do you think it's okay to have eyeliner and what looks like eyeshadow on with no eyebrows what what did you do jessica what happened um oh it's just awful um but yeah i, I really think that was the day that i went to prison so in arkansas um ew <laughs> My case in New York, I was a minor, so I'm not exactly sure when, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure that we can find my New York mugshots because I was a minor. So if y'all wanna dig for those, that'd be cool. Now I'm gonna show you this mugshot where I have no concept of why I'm fat or what's wrong with my eyeball. I look like I have a lazy eye in this one. Um, my forehead looks like it's nine feet tall. <laughs> and I obviously look like I want to throw up. And I would do my hair like this. I would actually slick it back. What? Um, ew. So I would slick my hair back or whatever. I look like I have a black eye. So I was probably fighting someone. Smart, Jessica. Real smart. Um, yeah, so... That's all of the mugshots that I have. And I just want to say before I end this video, hopefully you guys got a little bit of amusement out of me making fun of myself in these mugshots, but I was a very lost, very broken person. And like I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of addicts don't feel like they can reach out for help. I was one of those people. Not only did I think a life of sobriety was completely impossible, but I didn't think I would ever figure that out. I thought people that were sober were lying, maybe? I mean, I, I didn't understand. I felt like that was going to be my life for the rest of my life, and I would die before I saw the age of 30. And I think when I was in my addiction, I had tunnel vision, so like I didn't see the world around me in a clear way. I was so... I was so lost. I don't know how to say it other than that. But I was just, I thought, I'm a drug addict. It's just who I am. If people don't want to accept that, then fuck them. And that's really the old Jessica's mindset. I thought if you didn't like me, you didn't, you didn't understand me and my Kurt Cobain ways, then you didn't need to be around me. And eventually I just stopped hiding my track marks. I didn't care. I would get high around people and I just, I just stopped caring at the end, you know? Um, and that's just, that's awful to think that that was me. And it's also been so long that I feel like I'm a completely different person. And I'm so grateful for that. I feel like this is just a bad dream. Like, no way, no way. Like, no way is that really me. I mean, I know that it is. I know that I went through all of that, but oh my God, to think that I was gonna die before 30, to think that I could never be sober is so foreign to me now because I have so long in sobriety. So 
If you are still struggling in addiction, please find the strength to reach out for help. You are not alone. And there's so many people out there. There's so many resources out there that can help you. I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay sober. Do not break the law. And please reach out for help. Bye, you guys.